Hello guys, I'm coming at you today with a video I want to talk on my experiences in brothels here in Australia. Now before I get into it, I want to make that very clear. I've only had experiences here in Australia and only a handful of establishments. Now I understand that in other parts of the world, there are a lot of creators who love to promote the brothels that they work in and that's perfectly fine. They may have had positive experiences, but I personally have not. And I think that we need to see more content of people talking out about bad brothels that they have worked in and what it is really like okay there is a lot of glamorization in the industry and i understand that some of my content probably does feed into that but i also want to share the bad and i want to share the reality so this video is going to be my experiences what it was like for me if your opinions or views or experiences were different that's perfectly fine you can leave them in the comments but please just be respectful that this is how it was for me and i do actually have um, a little bit of trauma from what happened to me in those places. I did multiple story times of my assaults and things like that. So anyway, without further um, rambling, uh, let's get into it. So the first brothel that I worked in was about a year into working privately. I should probably put in here too, I was not in a position of needing to be in the brothels. I never was. Uh, I went in to gain more experience, to see what it was really like and to have firsthand, that firsthand experience of a different part of the industry so that I could come online and use my platform to talk about it. Uh, and so that I would be more well-rounded because I don't think I would have had the same understanding for survival workers if I hadn't actually ever met one. I hope that that makes sense. So again, I started at Viper about a year thereabouts into having done private work. So I definitely sold sex before. That part of it was not new. However, I'd always been my own bot. Now, my goal when I went in was to complete 20 shifts in order to make content about my experiences. I did only make it through 17, but I did get pretty close and I've got to give myself a pat on the back for managing to do that many. Standard full service. I was paid $80 for half an hour and I may be slightly wrong on the prices, but I think it was 110 for a 45 minute and $130 for an hour. This was for sex, a blowjob with a condom on obviously and a massage. It was up to the girls if they included anything else like kissing or that kind of thing in a standard. Most of the girls didn't. And for me personally, you know, I was very strict on it. It was one position. It was no dawdling around. It was no kissing. It was no touching of my body, nothing like that, because I wanted to deter them for, from booking me for a standard. I understand that that point of view is very, very privileged. Uh, there were plenty of girls in those places that really needed those bookings and were more than happy to do standards. However, I didn't want to do them and I didn't enjoy doing them. So therefore I obviously wasn't gonna add any bells and whistles to that package when I didn't want to be booked for it. What I did want to be booked for while I was in there was my GFE girlfriend experience uh, with me in the broths. It pretty much included anything that wasn't rough. So like kissing, body kissing, body touching, multiple positions, cuddling, um, oral on me, like all that sort of stuff, right? I think most of us have a bit of an understanding of what GFE is and that is my preferred booking style. So in extras, I was getting 150 on a half an hour, 200 on a 45 minute and 250 on an hour of which those extras they paid, all of that went straight to me. The venue didn't take half of it where they had taken half of their booking fee, which is why I was paid so little for the standard. Hope that makes sense. I did also offer um, a second shot, particularly in the full hour for another $50 uh, that they could do a second shot or even a third shot if they you know, were going really quickly. And yeah, I had quite a lot of guys more than willing to pay those rates in Viper uh, in particular. How I ended up at Viper, I was referred by a friend who I danced with for about a week or two at Showgirls. She hadn't stayed in the stripping scene for very long, but we did stay in contact on Instagram and we talk here and there and her and her best friend worked at this venue and she was the one that told me that it had the best reputation of the brothels in Brisbane um, and she had worked in a lot of them and according to her this was the best option that we had. How I got the job was I emailed in saying I would be interested in working for them, I asked for photos, I sent through my professional photos that I used on my ad at the time from Assassin Style Photography and yeah they immediately told me that I could come in for the job. I just had to get a health certificate, which was the law at the time. I'm not really sure if that's changed. I'm gonna guess it probably has changed with decriminalization, but we had to provide a health certificate, which was done at the hospital to prove that we, you know, we were fine to work in terms of sexual health. Another note I wanna add in here, I am still friends with some of the girls that I worked with at Viper and still keep in contact with them to this day. However, there was a lot of cattiness and that is something that needs to be, I guess, understood when you're going into 
brothels. You are the direct competition of everyone around you and they are seeing you get more bookings or less bookings or whatever the case is. And it, it just forms this competitive nature. Some people will dislike you purely because you are more successful than them, which absolutely happens in privates too. It's just not normally so blatantly in everyone's face. Like, oh, look at her, she's had five bookings and I've had one kind of thing. So it, it does make it kind of uncomfortable at times. Now, Viper had a no drink and no drugs policy there. You couldn't drink on shift, not even one, um, and no drugs were allowed while you're on the premises. However, on multiple occasions, I saw girls at the venue who came out of booking clearly intoxicated or on something. I saw girls drinking out the back. It's not my business, but it, it definitely was happen, happening in that place. And I do think that that needs to be just mentioned casually on here. So after I had finished up at Viper, I did my 17 shifts. I went back to privates. I spoke openly about my experiences and all the assaults that happened to me at Viper, which, you know, we'll get into some stuff later on. Uh, when I came back, because I retired for a little bit, came back to full service, my first week back, I went and did some shifts at Pentagon, which is a brothel at the Gold Coast, which is, it's about an hour and a half drive from me. So it is a little bit of a mission. Figured it was probably better to go out of Brisbane because at this point I had quite a large social media following on TikTok and I'd had a lot of people coming into Viper previously that were like, wait a second, I follow you on TikTok kind of thing, or I've seen you on TikTok. So I thought maybe if I was a little bit outside of Brisbane, I might have less people recognizing me because it was never my intention to just be like bringing all my own traffic into the place. It was, I wanted an authentic experience in the venue. So I went out to Pentagon. My goal was just to do five shifts. I only made it through three. And I documented like every single thing about my experiences at Pentagon on TikTok. I've since lost that TikTok, but there are still a few of the money counts and um, story time videos on my Instagram Reels account, uh, Lilith Lodge Official, if you wanna go and find that and see everything in live time. Now, this venue did pay us a little bit more for a standard, so I've got the notes here. I definitely know it was $100 for a half an hour and $110 for a half an hour if it was after, I think it's mid, it was midnight or 1 a.m. You got like an extra $10. And I think, and I may be wrong, the 45 minute was 130 and the hour was 150. Now, if I'm like $10 off on these, I'm really sorry. Uh, this is all just going off of my memory, but I do remember it was $100 for a 30 minute standard during the day and early night time. Again, I charged the exact same extras here. However, it was a lot higher harder to get any sort of extras, even fucking $50 out of these guys at Pentagon. At least at Viper, majority of the guys were willing to cough up some extra cash and genuinely seemed to want a better experience at Pentagon. It felt like they just wanted the cheapest fucking thing that they could get and they wanted to push you as far as they could for that cheapest cheapest value. And now when I say we got the extra $10 as our cut for those after hours, it actually became harder to upsell extras when they were paying extra. So keep in mind when I'm getting $100, the venue's getting $100, so they've already paid $200. So adding your extras on actually became more difficult than it had been at Viper. I hope that makes sense. Again, I just emailed them asking if I could work there, sent in pictures, they said I could come in. I also had to have a health certificate the same as I did for Viper. Now, Pentagon in particular had a lot of, hello Tommy, had a lot of touring girls coming through at that point in time. And I found all of the touring girls to be lovely. I had great conversations with them. The house girls, like as in the home girls, there was a few, hello Tommy, there was a few that um, I really liked and I had a couple good conversations with. However, majority of the home girls were very standoffish. In particular, I'm going to add this in here. There was a conversation one day I had been booked for to see four clients. Uh, I think this was the night I made the most money there. I'd been booked by four clients, all with GFE, if I remember correctly, or maybe it was three clients all with GFE. At this point, uh, there was quite a few girls that hadn't had a single booking. And they were talking amongst themselves in the room quite loudly. I was in the room and I could hear it clear as day. And I'm also deaf. So, I mean, if I could hear it and have a completely non-working ear, must have been deliberately loud enough for me to hear, saying that they think that it's really wrong and that when a girl is making a lot of money and seeing that everyone else is making nothing, that she should bow down respectfully and go home so that those girls can make some money. So they were, they were talking about that and how unfair it was that I had gotten all the work that day amongst themselves. Uh, and it, it made me feel really, really bad, but this isn't how these places should be working. 
this is a competitive line of work and I mean there, there's nothing that I can do like I, I can't guarantee that if I hadn't been there that those guys would have even booked them they may have just walked they may have gone to another venue because there's a chance that you know they weren't his type you know what I mean that happens a lot in establishments they will simply walk but anyway that's just for a little bit of context uh this venue again had no drink no drugs and i did not see anybody drinking or on drugs in the three shifts i was there again it was only three shifts so i really can't talk on you know if if that sort of thing was going on but i definitely didn't see it now i want to get into my issues with these brothels what i think is wrong with them what i think is unethical what i think needs to change which probably won't change but you know a girl can dream okay my biggest issue in these places number one was being forced to see clients for a standard i think that women in these places should have the right to set a price they're comfortable with and you know not take 80 dollar bookings if they don't want to or need to if you're in a position where you are heavily booked in these venues like back to back to back which has happened to me it is exhausting and I don't think that it makes sense business-wise to be going in and taking an $80 booking when if I would have just waited 10 or 15 minutes, another guy would have walked in and maybe I would have made $250 instead of $80, if that makes sense. There are a lot of girls in these, oh my gosh, Elise. There are a lot of girls within these venues that are happy to take standards, uh, that will do extras in their standards, etc., And that's perfectly fine. But I do think that given it's a marketplace and they have multiple options and girls can set their prices to whatever, I think that would make more sense that I could go in and say, hey, look, the minimum I'm willing to do anything for is $150 and then just take those bookings. I don't think we should be forced to take a standard. I don't think that that's okay, especially when we're getting paid $80, which didn't feel okay to me personally. It felt wrong. I felt like I was being exploited. And I do understand that that view on the $80 is incredibly privileged. And there are a lot of women in this industry who would love to be making that. Um, I, I do understand that. And I'm, I'm sorry if that's setting you or being offensive. It's just my genuine experience. And I want to be completely transparent. The other big issue is being forced to see rude clients. There were so many times where I would intro someone and they would tell me I was fat in an intro or tell me that I was ugly or ask me how many men have railed you tonight. Like just stuff like this to me in an intro. I would leave the intro room and say to the manager, I don't, I don't want to see them. I don't want to see them. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to do full service for that guy. He's fucking rude. And I would be forced to go in and take the booking. And I'm like, how is that? How is that fair? How is that safe for me? Because if somebody is being rude to me in an intro, Imagine the risk that I, I face doing full service in a room with them. Like, it's just, anyway, that, that is what it is. Now, while we're on this note, under the standards, I wanna make note of when you do take a standard, right? And you're, you're telling them this is what you get in a standard, nine times out of 10, the standards that I did, the clients would push and push and push because they didn't actually want a standard. They want a GFE, but they simply couldn't afford it or didn't wanna spend that kind of money. So you would go in a room and you would say to the guys, okay, you've paid, you've paid the $80. That's what I've got paid. You get one position. You can't touch my, you know, any of my body. You can't grope me. You can't kiss me. You can't, none of this good stuff. None of the fun stuff you can do. You can literally just get me one position and go until you finish and get out. That's all you've paid for. And of course, that's not what they wanted. That's not the experience that they wanted. So they would just push and push and push. And you would have to give 10 fucking warnings to these guys. And it would always be, oh, sorry, I got carried away. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. Oh, sorry, I didn't know. It was always playing dumb and you would just get pushed and pushed and pushed non-stop it was exhausting mentally you would leave like there was so many nights that I left crying I respected my boundaries when I had said no you can't do that in a standard it, it was horrible it was absolutely horrible and it, it was in particular it was the men booking standards that I have this fucking issue with over and over again I feel that if a venue wants to offer standards that's fine if that boundary, I think they should get one fucking warning. One warning, hey, that's not in your service. The next warning, they should be kicked out, okay? And there should be no refund given to that client at all because they've had a fucking warning and that should be all that it is. It shouldn't be these women in these fucking rooms stuck there putting up with this shit to make their money and to keep their job. That's another thing. Thre like the threats of being fired from the venue or not being allowed back, 
because you cause trouble or you don't see clients when you're told to, etc. Another thing is forced to do back to back bookings. This happened to me a lot, particularly at Viper. Um, Pentagon didn't really have the foot traffic in my experience, but Viper definitely did. In particular, I'm remembering a night where I was with a new client that had walked in. I got an hour with him and he extended half an hour. He was really, really lovely. We actually weren't even doing the deed. We were doing other things, but not that. Um, and he paid full GFE, super lovely, um, rated him like a nine out of 10 in his behavior in the bookings. Now, when I came out of that booking, I had no idea, but I had two other clients that I'd previously seen literally waiting for me. Okay, so I've just done an hour and a half. Fair enough, I wasn't having mm -mm in that, but I was doing some other things during that booking, okay. And I come out and they're like, yeah, okay, uh, this, this regular of yours who's seen you before, he wants the 45 minutes. And I'm like, okay, sweet, is it okay if I go to the toilet and get some water? And it's, no, hurry up, he's been waiting because you just took that extension. So they, you know, snatch all my linen off me because I obviously had all my dirty bedding and stuff from that booking, snatch it off me, they go and throw it in the laundry and I'm sent straight in, okay, straight in, look in a hot mess to see the client that's been waiting for me. I then do that booking, okay, and I get through that booking. So I've now been an hour and a half and 45 minutes back to back. I come out and it's this other guy that's been waiting since while I was in with the first one, once an hour. And I'm like, okay, well, like I'm dehydrated now. I need water. I need a second. I need to do a wee, like whatever the fuck it is. I need a second. And it's no, it's no, he's been waiting and he's going to leave if you don't take that booking and we're going to have to refund him. And I was forced to just see these men back to back to back, it was insanity. Like, I understand that a lot of people who watch sex work content, they think that all we do is simply lay on our back starfish and we're getting paid all this money just for a man to slam into us, which is not the case. These bookings are exhausting on your body, like especially for some particular clients that, you know, maybe have ED. And so there's a lot of back and forth trying to get things working, trying to calm a client down. There are clients that are really rough. So you actually are injured during the booking, which happened a lot in brothels. I found the clients to be a lot more rough than the clients I get private privately um so you may have been injured you may there was a point where there was a night where i got split like all sorts of things okay and to have to do these things back to back is it's inhumane it feels like exploitation is what it feels like it felt like um it felt it felt non-consensual is honestly what it felt like and there were many nights that i came home and i cried after those shifts but in my head i guess i sort of gaslit myself into thinking that it was just because I was a privileged bitch and that is why I was struggling so much and that there were plenty of workers who didn't have any issue doing that. Now I look back on it and I realize that thing that was going on was okay, nothing that was going on was fair and I think I think I need to voice all of that. Now another massive issue in these places is the venue regulars assaulting girls and facing no consequences for it. This is something I've seen happen at both venues and why I say regular, so obviously doing our line of work, we expect that things are going to go wrong sometimes. Sometimes there's going to be somebody who's drunk and hurts us or someone who comes into the venue with the intention of assaulting a girl. This is part of the risk we take. It's not okay, but it is the reality of the work. My main issue is that a lot of the time that these assaults happened to me, these clients were regulars of the venue. And the venue was well aware of the behavior that these clients had in the room, but was still allowing them to book girls without giving them any sort of pre-warning of previous behavior, because I think that would make it different if you're pulling the girl aside and saying, yep, he wants to book you, but uh, he's done this and this and this before these are the reports we have, please be careful. Then you could be more on guard, right? But they weren't disclosing any of that to us until after we were reporting the assault. We were often, yeah, so we're, we're forced to see these venue regulars because they're weekly or fortnightly regulars of the venue and they're making money. Money, it's all about the money off these guys and allowing them to assault us in the room. I had so many assaults happen in these places, like more than 10 assaults, obviously varying in severity between these venues in tw in 20 shifts. So every second shift I was having an assault. I think there was one night where it was every single client. So it was like three in the one day, but the, the odds are one in every second night, somebody was hurting me in some sort of way. Someone was, um, you know, biting me. Somebody was holding me down. Somebody was uh, trying to face fuck me when I, that's not part of GFE and that's not even something that I offer. It's, it's very fucked up because all they care about is the money. They don't care about the safety of their goals. And that is putting us at risk. The fact that uh, my last, I think it was my 
last shift at Pentagon. I did a story time on it at the time and, you know, obviously time has passed and my memory may not be as clear as it was the next day, the day after that had happened when I made that story time and I don't think that's still on the internet anywhere. It might be on my Reels account. I had waited around all night. I had this guy come in and he wanted a, I think it was a half an hour GFE, so he did pay my extras. We got in the room and he was just non-stop trying to do shit he shouldn't have been doing. Um, it was horrible. He was trying to force me to do things without a condom on. He was asking to take the condom off. He was trying to remove the condom. Uh, keep in mind, I'm getting paid, what, like 200 and something dollars for this booking, $240 or something. To have to put up with that is just, it's insane. Um, trying, to, trying to roll the condom off inside of me, not even being very discreet about what he's doing, discreet about what he's doing, all sorts of things. When I left that booking, uh, and I reported it to management. They said to me that on file they had, cause he was a regular um, of the place and after 10 visits, they get a discount or something like that. So he had a file there. The file had a note saying that uh, he had done this previously to other girls, tried to stealth them, hurt them in the room, being really rough with them, um, cause bleeding, etc. And they let me just stroll on into that room and give me any fucking warning before I was in there one-on-one -on -one with him which is just, it's just so fucked up. Now, one last thing I wanna make note of is there are panic alarms in these places. There are panic alarms on the wall or hidden behind dresses and things like that, hidden in places that only the girls know where they are. However, when you start at these venues, you are stressed too that these buttons are only to be pressed if you are literally going to die. They are not to be pressed just because somebody is so assaulting you, like I wouldn't have been allowed to press it with the guy trying to remove his condom. That's not considered uh, bad enough to press the button. The button is if you're going to die, which in most of those situations, there is no way for you to get to the fucking button, okay? And because of the way that management stresses about these buttons, you actually become so scared to even press them because you know you're going to get in trouble if they don't deem it bad enough. And nothing in these places is ever bad enough in their opinion. No, no, they think you're just being a brat, you're just being entitled, you're just whinging and moaning. They don't care about you at all. They don't care. In my experience, I think I was honestly, and I say this honestly, I felt more unsafe in these brothels than I do working privately. Now, with that said, it may be due to my price point, it may be due to, um, you know, the type of clients that I am attracting and my screening protocol and things like that, right? But at least if I felt uneasy about a client, I'm able to find out who they are before I see them and I'm able to say no. You know what I mean? It's not like they're, when something happens to you in a brothel, you have no idea who that guy is because he didn't give any ID, he can just run out. Like, it's fucked, it's really fucked up. Um, and you know, they push to girls that it's safer because there's security. In both of those places that I worked, there was no security. There was nobody with a security license. It was just a bunch of girls out the back and the manager, which in those places was always female on shift. So if somebody did something wrong, there was no security there to help at all. There was nothing, it was just a mass of girls, which still helps, but they are not a male security guard or anything like that. I witnessed all kinds of things happen. And honestly, I could probably do like, yeah, I could probably do an assortment of story times on those experiences. But to end this off, I wanna talk about one last place that I worked at that I didn't have a negative experience. This place is called Piper's Range and it was out in Tamworth. Now it has just been sold to somebody else. So it's no longer owned by Piper. So my, ex my positive experiences there, I have no idea what it's gonna be run like now. However, Piper's Range was the only one of its kind that I knew of and I had learned about them from TikTok and from seeing Jessica J go out there and following their TikTok and all that kind of thing. Piper had been an industry worker herself and that's how she generated the income to buy the range, which meant that she had a different level of understanding for us in our work than what I previously experienced with other owners. Now, Piper allowed us to set our own prices. When I went to Piper's Range, I never had to take a standard and I worked at my full private rates. I shit you not, I swear on my life, I swear on my cat's life, she allowed me to go out there and charge $900 an hour. That's what I was allowed to do. There was no issue from her. She didn't fight with me. She didn't lecture me, nothing. She said, sweet, you can see how you go. It was more of like a, um, because from what I understand, I was the first girl to go out there and do that. It was more of like a, well, let's see what happens. And she told me that at that time that I went out, that was the most money she had ever made off a touring girl. And again, her cut was only that of a standard, right? She wasn't taking part of my extras and like my full rate. She was just taking the same room hire fee that she would for her other girls. 
So for me, it actually worked out about the same as what I would have paid for a hotel. But not only did I have more security there because she and her partner actually had security licenses. I had girls around me, I had community, I had her there to help with things if I needed. Um, I also had the traffic that she was able to generate and because she had all like social media and stuff in that area. It was just all round a positive experience. I couldn't fault it at all. I, I could not fault it at all. Um, and that is what I would love to see happen for brothels in the future. I think that if they were safe, um, and there was somebody with a security license. I think that should always be a thing. I think somebody on the premise should have a security license at all times. Uh, I think that, I do think that sometimes the no drink, no drugs can be a little bit strict. Um, I don't think that the client shouldn't be able to bring in like a little bottle of champagne. I understand that's probably complicated with laws and things, but to me, I think that that is really silly because it may actually make clients experience better, but I understand we all have different opinions on drinking on the job, that kind of thing. I feel that, yeah, being able to set your own own, own price is not only more ethical and uh, better for the worker's mental health, but it also helps with things like competition. And when I say this, like I look at it like economic, like an economic standpoint on this issue. If I go out to a venue and I'm charging $900 an hour, I am not taking any work from the girls taking standards or that wanna do 350, 400 an hour, 500 an hour, I'm not taking their clients. Uh, so therefore, there is more chance of the work being dispersed more evenly through the girls, if that makes sense. Like if, I, if my price is up here, but there's girls that are charging down here, there are plenty of clients that will work, walk into that venue and be like, oh, well, I can't afford that. So she's just not an option. I will go with this girl. You know what I mean? She, she offers a be better value service, that kind of thing. Um, and it, it means that the amount of bookings are going to be more evenly dispersed between your girls having all these different price points. Now, I can absolutely see that having like two you know, a $900 and a $700 an hour girl at that venue never would have worked because, you know, they wouldn't have been making enough money having two at that kind of price point. But having one seemed to work and she did implement this uh, for workers after me. I know Camille went through, I know Amber Luke went through. There's a few big name girls uh, in the private space that went through these places and made a lot of money for that range. I think that we assume, I don't know why we do, but we assume that these men going to brothels cannot afford private workers. They cannot afford, you know, the bells and whistles, that kind of thing. That is not the case. That is not the case at all. I have quite a few private clients who regularly frequent these brothels in, in Brisbane. They, they do. I have ones in Sydney who regularly frequent um, places in Sydney. And, you know, like sometimes it's convenient. Sometimes it's just that that way they can go in and see all the girls. Like it's 2 a.m. They've been out partying. Like that's just how they want to do it. And that's perfectly fine. We can't assume that nobody can afford $900 an hour because I'm telling you right now from my experiences at Piper's Range, there are plenty of men who were willing to pay that price and did pay that price. And a lot of them have seen again since, okay? When I toured back through privately, since now Piper doesn't own it anymore, you know, I'm not gonna be going back unless it's the same rules, I'd probably consider it. Um, but yeah, I went through just recently privately and uh, a lot of the clients came and saw me. I even had clients that didn't book me last time I went through, but were regulars of her venue, come and book me privately come and pay $900 an hour. To end this video, because it's a long ramble, I would really love to see a shift in the ethics in brothels. Um, I would really love to see places where girls can set their own rates. I would love to see places that there is harsher punishment for clients who have assaulted girls. Uh, I can understand if money, you know, is really, really tight, maybe allowing the person to have a second chance, but please just at least fucking warn the girls, at least warn them what the person has previously done so that they know what they're walking into in that room. There are girls that will still take the booking anyway. I know that firsthand, um, but it would give you such an upper hand to know what you are walking into. You could be so much safer, but I really hope that shed some light on brothels. Um, and I will do a little bit of a dig and see if I can find some of those old story times on my uh, Lilith Lodge official Instagram and maybe refilm them so that I can do like a more current version, like repost, but just me refilming the exact same video. Um, and yeah, I hope that's been helpful to somebody. Yeah, I just, I really hope things change, but unfortunately this is how it is. And this is a lot of people's experiences here in Australian brothels. So yes. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day.